as a teacher, you'll probably be aware there's plenty of uh, children who, who want to fire things at the back of your head. Uh, what they do is they stretch out an elastic band and they fire a paper pellet and you can never see them because you turn around and they, 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 you can't identify them. But what they're really trying to do, they're not trying to hurt me or upset me, they're really trying to show me they understand Hooke's law, which is an expression of how if you add force to an object, you change its shape. You need to be able to show that on a graph and you need to be able to do some calculations based on that. So this is a what we call a force extension graph. Force on the y-axis in newtons and extension on the x-axis in meters. You've perhaps done this experiment before. What you do is you take a spring and you clamp it in position. Uh, you measure the force you add to the spring and you measure its extension. So the first reading, the first uh, data point is when their force is zero and there's no extension. There's no change in shape so far. So there we go at the origin, zero newtons and zero meters. Then you add a mass, you add a one newton mass and you measure what's called the extension. Now I need to make it very clear to you, the extension is the change in length. So from the original length here to the new length there. And we measure this extension, given the letter E, okay? And we plot the data point, one Newton mass, one Newton weight, 100 gram mass, 0 0.1 meters is what I would measure if I was doing this. Then add another mass. So now we've got two Newtons of force and again measure the extension from the original length down to the new length. And you can see we've got the same extension again. So the total extension at two Newtons is 0.2 meters. Repeat that, keep adding masses, three Newton of weight. Measure the extension once more, the original length to the new length, and you can see for three Newtons, we've got 0.3 meters of extension. Now you're starting to see a pattern here, you're starting to see a relationship. And this is often used in physics, a really good one for introducing the idea of a straight line relationship, a proportional relationship. All those points are on a nice straight line. That is what we call a proportional relationship. If we dub double force, we double extension. And you can use this for actually predicting if the spring continues to obey Hooke's law, continues to obey this trend, then you're going to be able to predict how much extension there is at four newtons, for example. And you can see along to the line and down to the extension axis, you can see 0.4 meters for four newtons. Well, we can do more with that though. We can actually use this t relationship to calculate something else something which is called the spring constant. Now this is the equation for Hooke's law because we can express Hooke's law in two ways. We can express it as the graph, the proportional graph, or we can express it as the equation F equals K times E. Force is the spring constant times the extension. So we can use the graph to work out K, what is the stiffness, if you like, of the spring? How stiff is our spring? What is the spring constant? If you rearrange this equation to give you K equals, you can do that either by doing the inverse operation, so opposite of times E is divided by E, K is F over E, or by using your formula triangle that you're probably familiar with now. Uh, put them in, F has to go at the top because K and E are multiplied together there, so they have to go next to each other at the bottom. Cover up K and you get F over E, force divided by extension. 
Now let's just use the largest pair of numbers we've got. 4 is the force, 4 newtons. 0.4 is the extension. 4 divided by 0.4 is 10. And you need a unit. It's 10 newtons divided by meters, so it's 10 newtons per meter. That is a number expressing how stiff the spring is. If you put in 10 newtons, you will get one meter extension. A stiffer spring would need more newtons, so it might be 20 newtons per meter, 20 newtons for one meter. Now that's an interesting situation and you're going to need to be familiar with just a few situations which we use Hooke's Law. Some of the interesting ones I think are for sports. So I talked about the children in my lesson trying to hit me in the back of the head. They're using something called a catapult. So what they do is they stretch the elastic, uh, they put in a type of energy called elastic potential energy when they release it, that elastic potential energy is converted to kinetic and the pellet fires across the room. Another situation exactly like that is a tennis racket. So the strings on the tennis racket, they stretch. When they're at their most stretched, they've got elastic potential energy. They, they return to their original shape and that elastic potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. Now another situation which is uh, the same but different is a golf ball. Now on a golf ball it's not the club that actually deforms, it's the golf ball itself. The golf ball actually squashes. But you've still got the situation by where the golf ball will return to its original shape and in doing so that elastic potential energy will be converted back into kinetic energy. So it's very interesting. Have a little think of some other situations uh, where we use this idea of changing shape and returning to original shape to convert elastic potential into kinetic energy. Thanks a lot for listening.